what's up guys Peter here so I cannot believe it we are well past the two-year mark of ownership of this 04 Lamborghini Gallardo a blu-ray buy it I, I didn't even remember to do a two-year video we did of course the I think the one month review video after I got the car then we did the one year review um, I think we even did a one week review and here we are two years later and we are long overdue for a two year Lamborghini review video. So here's what I think about owning a Lamborghini for two years. All right, so I'm gonna try not to repeat the stuff that I talked about in the previous review videos. So I do apologize right now if I do repeat some things, I'm gonna try not to. But a lot has changed since the one year review. Uh, the last time when I made that one year review video, I was living in a completely different place and the car was not twin turbo. It didn't have the LP570 front bumper. It didn't have the Superleggera side skirts. There were a lot of things different. So since then, obviously, you guys know I have sent the car uh, down to Dallas, uh, Texas la earlier this year to get the stage two twin turbo uh, kit that they put out. And um, you know, while it was down there, I had them do the LP570 front bumper. Um, and I put on the side skirts when I got when I got the car back. And this year ha has been a little bit interesting. I have not gotten the chance to drive the car as much as I did in the previous years. Last year, I drove this car so much. I put so many miles on it because we were going down to uh, Massachusetts, meeting our our friends uh, down in the Massachusetts area. And, uh, you know, we were driving down there pretty much every weekend. It's like a two hour drive one way. And at that point in time last year, it was a lot easier for me to do that. I lived further south, so I was closer to Massachusetts, so it wasn't as long of a drive. And my business was in a different situation. It was kind of on like cruise control at that point in time. Uh, we moved an hour further north, so that makes it harder. And I've also been extremely busy in the business because my business is now in a transitioning phase. So I'm actually, it's kind of like I'm all, uh, I'm starting over again. Uh, I feel like I'm starting a business all over again uh, during this transitioning phase and I don't have the time to just jump in the car and drive down to, to Massachusetts as much as I used to. Um, you know, as you guys know, I'm in Southern Maine. There's not many of these cars around here. Although there are quite a few more Lamborghinis around here since I bought mine, which is kind of cool. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the reason why we used to go down to Massachusetts is because that's where uh, there's a lot of supercar owners down there. There's a lot of cars and coffee events. We don't have any of that shit up here. So this year, um, I actually thought I put on a lot more miles than I actually have. I've only put on about 4,000 miles this year. I thought it was 7,000, but I miscalculated. Uh, the car is rated around 30,000 miles right now. And, you know, I've been taking it out you know, whenever I can, you know, I live in a rural area. Like right now I'm going to Lowe's to get some, uh, some Plasti Dip to, to finish doing my wheels. And I'm just taking the car, it's a nice day out. But you know, I'll probably put 20 miles on the car. And uh, so I'm not, obviously not going down south every single weekend. So let's talk about maintenance costs really quickly. Um, you guys are probably curious if maintenance has gone up since I have twin turbo this thing. When I made the one year video, I told you how I really have had no big maintenance items at all. The car had run flawlessly for the, for the entire year of ownership. And really the only thing that I put in it for money as far as maintenance goes was an oil change and you know gas basically. And I tell you, it hasn't changed. The only thing that has changed now is the fact that I have to do oil changes every 1500 miles which depending on how much I drive this car can be pretty annoying, but that's to be safe since we're, we're, we're running a uh, highly built motor, we're running a lot of boost and everything out back. So, you know, I've got to do an oil change every 1500 miles. So every time I do an oil change, um, it is around a hundred bucks, uh, 115, something like that. The price hasn't changed too much. The only thing that has changed is that I don't have to buy the factory Lamborghini oil filter anymore because Dallas Performance uh, made it, uh, their kit makes it so you can use just a standard oil filter and it's 15 bucks versus 75 bucks now or 65 bucks. So I save a little bit of money there. So every 1500 miles, I'm doing an oil change, full synthetic oil, 
again around 115 bucks miles per gallon is a little bit more worse than it used to be not that much i have noticed since i got the car back it's making more power we've got the twin turbos you know i've noticed the car does burn a little bit uh does burn through fuel a little bit faster than it used to i have not tried to calculate calculate the mpgs i don't even know if this thing tells me oh yes it does tell me obviously it's an audi what am i thinking um so right now we're getting 28 miles per gallon if i get on it that drops down to 13. so it depends on how much i'm in in the gas um, but it's, it's really not that bad. You know, we're running on the 811 wheel horsepower tune right now. And you know, you know, I could drive to Massachusetts and back on this tank of gas, I think. So I know you guys want to hear numbers and stats and all that stuff, how much this car has cost me, uh, as far as ownership goes. And it really hasn't been that much at all. Honestly. I mean, most of the money has gone into, uh, modifying it, you know, sending it away for twin turbos maintenance has been pretty much non-existent i mean i have not had to change the brake pads um I, I honestly all i do is i put fuel in the thing and i change the oil that's it but as far as big items and i don't even want to say them because i'm still paranoid about it uh big items as far as the e-gear actuator the e-gear hoses uh the clutch all that stuff i mean i've had no issues with it i mean knock on wood uh, i've had no issues with it and i don't expect any issues with it i mean i drive the car like it's meant to be driven you know i don't park it in the garage and i think that has something to do with the fact that this car has been really reliable to me i mean i've had friends with newer gallardos that aren't even twin turboed that they just had so many troubles with you know I, I just talked to a friend last week who sold his for cheap cheap money because he was having so many issues with it it was leaking oil i mean i i don't even remember what everything that he said but he was just having a hell of a time with it and this is one of the very first lamborghini gallardos ever to be um imported into uh, America. I mean, the, the VIN number is a very, very low VIN number. I think it's like number 100 and something. And like I said, I just had good luck with it. I put, I spend like $35 in, in 93 octane fuel to fill this thing up. I mean, and I drive until it gets to about a little under half and I fill it up again. I mean, it's really that simple. Um, I do the oil changes every 1500 miles. It's around a hundred bucks. I still haven't done any other big major maintenance items like brakes or tires i mean i bought winter tires so i can drive in the winter but i'm not buying i haven't had to buy new tires because they these ones have worn out or anything i haven't had any major maintenance items besides besides the oil pressure sensor so on these cars there are some parts that tend to go bad uh, one of them being the oil pressure sensor. And you guys saw my video about that. I had to completely remove the upper intake uh, or the, the entire intake on the engine off of the car. It took me about three weeks to do this, to get to this little tiny sensor that had to be changed. Now, a lot of you guys think this had to do with the twin turbo build. It didn't, it had nothing to do with the twin turbo build. It's actually a stock part from Lamborghini that is known to go bad on these cars. The reason why it took so long for me to change it is because the car is twin turbo now. There's a lot of new parts in here that are in the way. Um, and you know, I had to re basically remove a lot of things on the engine to get to it. So that's one thing. And uh, that part was, I think around 250 bucks. And I did all the labor myself. So total cost, 250 bucks. If I took this to a dealer to have them change the oil pressure sensor with the amount of time it took me, I probably would have paid well over a couple grand for them to fix it. I mean, that's my guess anyways. Now, th again, I, I said earlier, this is one of the very, very early Gallardos to ever come into the United States. And when I took that old oil pressure sensor off, I saw that it was a very, very, very old, outdated oil pressure sensor part number. So it was bound to go no matter what, whether this thing was twin turboed or not, I can't even believe it made almost 30,000 miles. Um, and basically what was happening was I was getting a low oil pressure light on the dash um, and then it would go away. Like I would be stopped and it would, it would say, oh, low oil pressure sensor. And I'd shut the car off, but it had plenty of oil. Oil pressure uh, was fine on the gauge after the light went off and that led to ch changing the sensor. It was a big job. Uh, if it happens on yours, you know, if you do it yourself, if you're not twin turboed, you can get it done for around 250 bucks if you do it yourself. Another maintenance item I almost forgot was, it's getting dark out, I can take these off now. 
Another maintenance item that I almost forgot about was the spark plug. So, um, and this may, this was obviously because of the car being twin turboed. Um, the spark plugs followed. I was having issues on the race gas tune with losing power, not on the other tunes, like the tune I'm on now was running mint, but when I switched to the 1100 wheel horsepower race gas tune, um, the car was having issues. It was losing power uh, in the higher RPMs in certain gears. And um, we figured out that it was most likely the spark plug. So I changed the spark plugs myself. There's 10 of them, obviously. And I think I paid around 90 bucks for, for 10 um, NGK Iridium spark plugs. I also bought some new coils to go on with the spark plugs. Those cost me about 75 bucks, I think, in total. And um, you know, around 100 bucks, you should be able to get coils for no problem. Um, so that's another maintenance item, spark plugs. Nothing has really changed in the reactions um, category. You know, people still react to the car the same way. I live in a very rural area. It's not like I live in, in Miami Beach, Florida or something like that where these things are, are everywhere. So reactions are still pretty crazy, um, pretty typical. You know, nothing much has changed there. The car does look a little bit more aggressive now with the new front end. It sounds uh, kind of insane. One thing I have noticed that didn't happen before is that I get people, random people, text messaging me or Facebook messaging me when they see me on the highway or they're behind me in traffic. Um, I have had this happen numerous times where I'm like driving home late at night from you know dinner with friends or a car show or whatever and I'm just driving down the highway or just driving home and I'll check my phone when I get home and it's a text from some total stranger or a, or a Facebook message from, from some total stranger and it's like, hey man, your car sounds insane. Great job on it or something like that. And that's happened probably about six or seven times since this thing has been twin turbo. So it's something about the noise that really draws people in, I think. Maybe it's a combination of the new front end, um, but I've noticed that an, an, inc an increase in that right there. Another big change uh, in the past year came from, again, from this car now being twin turbo. And that is that everybody wants to race me. It's so fucking annoying. <laughs> it's so annoying. Like before when I had this car, you know, an 04 Lamborghini Gallardo, like 495 horsepower, 500 horsepower, whatever it made. You know, it's a fast car, but it's not a car that, you know, everyone would be trying to call out to race. Since I get this car twin turbo, that is the biggest change I've noticed is that everyone and their grandmother wants to race me with their friggin' GTRs, their fucking other Lambos, I mean, their super bikes, sport bikes, whatever you want to call it, everything. Everyone wants to race you. And I'm all for, for racing. I'm all for racing when the environment is right, you know, but it, it gets a little annoying. I, I, I don't like the people who try to like puff out their chest and they're like, oh, my, my GTR is so fast. You like, do you want to race? And, and, and I hate that. I hate that attitude. It, it, it's fucking annoying. It reminds me of being in like in, in preschool. So whenever I run into someone like that, I mean, I, I just don't associate with them. I mean, if, if someone's cool about it, they've got a fast car and they're like, hey, you know, do you want to run? Do you want to line them up? Absolutely, I'll do it. But if you're just an immature little bitch, then I'm just gonna ignore you. It, it, it's, it's, I, I, that's one thing I hate about the car community is when people act like little babies. And it's, it mostly comes from like the guys like the GTR fanboys and things like that. I mean, I get it, you know, it's cool that you've got a fast Nissan, but I really don't care. You know, I love all cars. You know, if your car is faster than mine, I really don't care. Um, you know, I didn't buy this car to be the fastest thing on the road. I bought it because it's exactly what I wanted. If I wanted a fast tuner car, I would go out there and, and I would buy a tuner car and I would build it to be fast. So that's one thing that has changed drastically is, is people, everyone wanting to race you. And they take it so seriously. Um, you know, some people get to the point where you know, they just get upset about it, you know, and it, it's just a waste of time, you know. I, you know, I like to have positivity in my life. I like to, you know, relax. I like to drive my car where I want to drive it. I want to drive it how I want to drive it. And honestly, I just, you know, I focus on making money during the week. You know, I'm not on Facebook every, every day, you know, calling people out to street races. Another big change uh, 
that has come in the past year. I would say probably the past three to four months actually. And I'm sorry I'm driving so slow here. I'm stuck in like commuter traffic, people driving home from work. Uh, but one, one of the biggest changes that has come in the past few months uh, has to do with me. And in the past, I, it was very hard for me to just enjoy this car. You know, when I'm driving it, just to enjoy it and listen to the sounds and not worry about if it's getting dirty or if there's brake dust coming off the wheels and it's going all over the side of the car, I'm gonna have to clean it when I get home. Or if I get stuck in a rainstorm, how dirty the car is gonna get. Or if I get a couple bugs on the front, you know, if it's gonna look dirty. You know, I am a very, very picky person when it comes to my, my cars, my toys, things like that. But there was a point where I, it was hindering me from enjoying the car. Like, there, you know, I wouldn't take it out because I was afraid of putting too many miles on it. Or I was afraid of it getting dirty and I had a car show in the morning that I had to go to. So I couldn't drive it um, right now because then I'd have to clean it again before the car show for four hours. I have grown to accept the fact that this thing is a machine. Although it's a beautiful machine, it's still a machine and you know it, it has a purpose i mean it, it's it's made to be driven and part of its natural state as being a car is just to be dirty you know sometimes there's going to be brake dust on the wheels sometimes there's going to be bugs on the front sometimes my window is going to have water spots on it and these are all things that i have learned to live with and it has allowed me to just drive the car in the past this car would never leave my garage unless it was in showroom condition clean. I mean, that means if I take it out for a drive like right now, right now, there's not many bugs out. It's pretty much winter, but you know, these brakes throw up a lot of dust and it goes all over the car and the car just gets naturally dirty when you drive it. Normally what I would have done in the past before I took it out of the garage again was completely clean the car. So it was spotless. I mean, everything. And that would take so much time, so much energy. I was just wasting so much time cleaning the car over and over again. And I tell you, it really stopped me from enjoying the car. Once I finally accepted the fact that this thing is a car, it's going to get dirty, it's okay if it's a little dirty, then it's allowed me to basically take the car out, drive it more, I don't have to worry about if it's perfectly clean every single time. And I found I'm driving it more, I'm enjoying the car more, I've come to accept the fact that, hey, it's gonna get dirty, it's okay. You can still clean the car once a week and it will still look nearly perfect. So that's a big change that has happened to me in the past few months. And like I said, with the car being twin turbo, it's just allowed me to enjoy the car so much more. It's also become easier for me to take this car to public places. Like right now I'm going to Lowe's to get something. I'm, you know, we take it to restaurants and things like that. We take it out places and I park the car. In the past, I would not have been able to park the car without having a nervous breakdown if it wasn't in my line of sight. Now, I'm still kind of like that because people are dicks. You know, I've had friends who've had their cars keyed and you know, I don't want to deal with that. Even though it's insured, I don't want to deal with it. But I've come to accept the fact that, hey, I can leave the car. If something happens to it, it's insured, it will be fixed, no problem at all. So that's something that uh, has allowed me to enjoy the car more. Another thing in the past year that I've been able to say that I've accomplished is that I've decided that I'm gonna be driving this thing throughout the winter. And again, that just comes with, hold on. That just comes with uh, coming to grips with the fact that it's a car, it was made to be driven, it's not a museum piece. Yes, it's still okay to have a clean ride, but you can still take it out and enjoy it. I mean, life is short and eventually you just die. So if you don't enjoy life while you're alive, if you don't enjoy the things that you have, then you're gonna be old and crippled someday and wishing that you had actually taken the time to enjoy your life. I don't wanna be the old guy that had a Lamborghini and didn't drive it every chance that he got. I want to be the guy that drove this car every chance that he got and you know took care of it and was just a true Lamborghini enthusiast. I mean, I don't know what else to say. And I don't think that a true car enthusiast wouldn't drive their car every chance that they got. People still follow me around. As you can see, there's a Jeep behind me that's following me around right now. I mean, nothing has changed there. That still happens. This is something that I've come to uh, accept uh, over time, and it's something that's never going to change. <laughs> you know, me being uh, an introvert and not wanting to talk to people, um, you know, it's been a struggle for me. 
to accept the fact that people are going to follow me around. They're going to want to check out the car. They're going to want to ask me questions. And they're going to want to touch the car. Although I do not let people touch the car. I know some of you guys are upset about the video that I posted um, about me telling kids not to touch the car. I work hard for this fucking thing, right? I clean it every single day. So honestly, I just don't want random people touching it. I mean, if I see someone touching it, I'm gonna tell them not to. This is my property. You know, it's not being a stuck up Lambo owner or anything like that. It's just have some respect for other people's property. I wouldn't touch your car. I don't care if it's a, a an 89 Honda Accord. I wouldn't touch it because I respect your property. So just because it's a Lamborghini and it's, it's cool to share with people, and it's cool to, to let them check it out. It doesn't mean it's okay to let people, you know, touch your private property. I mean, there's, there's really nothing else to say. So the intention is is, is, the, is still the biggest thing. I mean, it's, it's a yellow Lambo. I'm not gonna sit here and act like a douche and be like, oh, I don't want people bothering me. Um, but like I said, it was one of the hardest things that I had to, to, to get used to. Um, because again, I didn't buy this car for anyone else. I mean, I knew people were gonna notice it everywhere I went. Like there's a guy that just followed me. I'm, I'm, I'm in a Lowe's parking lot right now. I pulled all the way out back to get away from people so I could finish this video for you guys. And there's a car that literally pulled in with me, came in and is literally sitting right behind me, looking at me. I mean, it, it's obviously gonna happen. I mean, let me see if I can see it. Let me see if you can see them. You see him over there? Do you see him? Yeah. So that's what ha that happens every friggin' day. And whenever I do these videos for you guys and I need to park and talk, um, I I'll go like behind a building like this so no one can see me, just so I can do it uninterrupted. It's not like I'm trying to be, uh, you know, I don't wanna talk to people. It's just that, hey, I'm shooting a video. I, I don't wanna be interrupted. So now they're leaving. So those guys were like behind me on the main road. They turned somewhere completely different. And somehow they turned around, saw that I turned into Lowe's, followed me behind the store where literally no one is parked, turned around and just sat there and, and looked at the car. I mean, I'm sure they're taking pictures or something. I and mean, that's totally cool. But I'm just letting you guys know, these are the things that happen. And uh, it's two years into ownership of this car and it's something that when I first got this car, it was something that came to a complete shock to me. Like, yeah, I knew that people were gonna notice the car. It's yellow, it's a Lamborghini. There's not many around here at all. But uh, it was something that me, you know, I'm a very, very introverted person. Uh, I don't really talk to strangers. <laughs> and when, when you get people like constantly coming up to you, it's something that took a lot to getting used to. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because two years later, um, you know, I've talked about this in other videos that this actually ended up being a good thing for me. You know, it, it, it helped me be more social. It helped me with my social skills. It helped me meet new people. It helped me meet new friends that I otherwise wouldn't have met because I don't normally go up and just talk to people. Um, so it's been a good thing, although it's still something that I kind of like, you know, you know, when it happens, I'm like, uh, ah, someone's watching every move that I make right now and I'm going to be on their Facebook later. Um, you know, it's just something that you have to get used to. And, and, but, but it's also been a benefit to me as an introverted person. If you're someone who loves talking to people, if you're someone who loves attention, then you will be in your element when you have one of these things. I mean, as long as you're not in an overpopulated place where these things are, are, are everywhere, you live in a small town, you get a, a, a supercar like this, you're gonna be the talk of the town and you're gonna have people coming up to you. So if that's your thing, Hey, this is right up your alley. Another thing that's happened in the past year is uh, a couple friends of mine have gotten Lamborghinis, which is really cool. You guys have seen Steve. Um, uh, One Low Viper is his uh, YouTube channel. He has the twin turbo um, Dodge Viper. Well, he actually bought Parker Nierenstein from Vehicle Virgin's old Lambo, Candace. So um, he bought that and fixed it up and he's been ripping it around and um, you know, he's having a blast with that thing. And it's really cool to have another friend that has a Lamborghini that you can, you can actually cruise with. I mean, it, it's different. I mean, even if you're, if you're cruising with something like a Viper or a Corvette, it's just not the same. So when you have two Lambos rolling together, it's, it's, it's really cool. Uh, there's been other people that have got Lambos as well. 
um, in this local area and I think it's awesome. I think the more Lambos that come in this area, the better. It brings some of the attention off of me and it's also cool to, to cruise with more Lamborghini owners and talk with other Lamborghini owners. The build from Dallas Performance has been absolutely bulletproof. I mean, the car runs extremely strong. I mean, it took a long time for me to get used to, to using the new power and using the new power band properly. Like when I first got the car back, a bunch of people wanted to race me and there was there was a couple races where i lost horrendously and it was because i was simply trying to take off at like 2500 rpms when i should have been at like 5500 these are things that i had to learn over time uh, with it being a turbo car there's going to be some turbo lag it's not going to be it's going to be not going to be making boost until like you know four or five gram so you know those are things i had to learn and it was a, it's definitely been a learning curve with the new race clutch in it i mean it's extremely jerky it's not a daily driver but um, you know, overall, I love the car for what it for what I use it for. I'm in love with it, and um, you know, right now I plan on keeping it. I don't have any plans to sell it. I mean, I would like to to get something new eventually, but I would like to add it to the garage. I really would love to keep this car if I can because it was my first Lamborghini. I mean, and uh, it's not perfect. I mean, as far as uh, it has its little quirks with the racing clutch and, and stuff like that. But hey, I love the car. And this has been my two years with it. This is becoming a really, really long video. But I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts, my overall thoughts on the past two years of ownership without repeating too much of the stuff from the previous videos. Um, one other thing I would like to say before we wrap up is that I really appreciate all the support here on YouTube. It's allowed me to basically blend um, my hobby for my expensive hobby for Lamborghinis and making videos on YouTube together and it's kind of grown into like a little a little side business and I really like that I'm excited for the future the channel's still really small but there's you know there's still things that we can do so I, I just want to say thanks for your support thanks for watching this video this has been my two-year review with my twin turbo Lamborghini Gallardo with a year and a half of that being not twin turbo so I'll make another video update maybe in the spring uh, saying like two and a half year review or something we'll keep doing these so so if you like this type of stuff go ahead and smash that like button I would really really appreciate it, it lets me know that you like what I'm putting out and it motivates me to make more videos like this if you're new here please subscribe check out my other videos and I'll talk to you soon bye Sega!